So I will do a panel. Uh, short training on the, sorry, I'll do a short training on the planning process in the city of San Diego to place community planning groups in, in a context and also hopefully make the case for you to get involved. Then we'll welcome the new head of, let's see if I can just talk about this department, Planning and Neighborhood Restoration Department. Will Fulton will say a few words, introduce himself, and then hopefully a vision for the, the department. Then finally, we will have the last hour of tonight. Uh, we'll hear from a terrific panel of experts on community planning. I'm really excited. So let's get started with the panel and with the training. First, who is the Community Budget Alliance? We are a coalition of about 20 community-based groups. We came together last year to advocate for more transparency, accountability, and equity in city funding decisions. The overall goal is about getting more community voice and more community power into city decisions about funding, about, about our communities, about what our neighborhoods look like. Last year and this year, we helped in infrastructure projects in the city budget, such as more street lights throughout the city, um, a skate plaza to City Heights, um, hopefully someday we're going to be a skate park. And we also helped win a, a small pilot program for free bus passes for certain low income high schoolers throughout certain uh, neighborhoods. Hopefully that will become not the pilot program, but a full fledged program. And lastly, what we do is really come out into the community and to do trainings. We like to do trainings and educate on the city budget, on capital improvement projects. Um, and how to advocate successfully for your neighborhood at the city. So what is the context for tonight? So like I said, there has been a kind of shift in the attitude of the city. It's pretty exciting. They really are reaching out. They really want to hear from us. They want to hear from residents. We have a new uh, subcommittee at the city council. Uh, it's an infrastructure committee. And they're looking at issues of how can we fund and build and get um, they're going to be making a lot of decisions this year. They're going to be deciding uh, things about the quality and quantity of investment in our neighborhoods. Also, all community plans have either been updated or on, are expected to be updated in the next few years. This is important. I will explain what community plans are and why you should get excited about going to the meetings for yours if it hasn't been done yet. Um, and then community planning groups, the, what we're going to be talking about tonight, they just got an increased role starting last year to do outreach and collect input from their from community residents on what they want to see uh, invested in their neighborhoods, what kind of infrastructure they should, the city should be investing in. And finally, this is kind of interesting, the city is selling bonds. We are basically taking our credit card, the city's taking the credit card, and we are selling bonds, $100 million a year for the next three years, to fund infrastructure. So those, that money now needs to be decided how it's being spent. Just an FYI, about 50% of it goes to streets and water and sewer. But then there's the other 50% that goes out into our communities. We need to help decide that, hopefully. So real quick, what is infrastructure? Um, it's a word that I have grown very fond of, um, very close to. Essentially, infrastructure is the basic items that we have in the built environment. Um, so streets, water and sewer pipes, but also buildings such as the library area, fire stations, police stations, um, rec centers, and also the parks, sidewalks, street lights. So basically anything you can touch out there is infrastructure. And a lot of it is city funded. Not all of it, a lot of it. Um, and decisions about the infrastructure investment are structured through the land use planning and budgetary decision making. So these are the processes, um, the general big documents that we'll be dealing with tonight. So where does it all begin? It begins with the general plan. And it gets more specific as we move through these through the community plans and finally the capital improvement plan and the annual city budget. Briefly, a city's general plan provides the vision. So it's, it's for future development, construction, and infrastructure investment, while the annual budget actually implements this vision through approving and appropriating funds for the infrastructure work. This process of planning is one of the main methods that the city takes in input, here's your voice, 
voice and response. However, there are challenges to implementing the visions captured in the general and community plans. Um, infrastructure investment is a complex process of creative funding solutions. There is not enough money to do everything that we need or want to do. So it's really a question of allocation of stretched resources and sometimes competing interests. So here's a picture of the city of San Diego's general plan. California state law requires each city and county to adopt a general plan. And the general plan is the basis for all land use decisions within a city and provides a vision for how the city should grow and develop. It's also a vision for how it should provide public services and maintain defining characteristics. So it's our plan for what we want to look like, who we want to be. And the adoption of the plan represents one of the primary ways, as I said, for citizens to tell the city what they want to see and how decisions should be made. Here's a picture. So that is, I love maps. I love maps. So I'm trying to bring you a bunch of maps. But if you have, go online, flip through our um, general plan and our community plans. It's fascinating. It's really geeky, but I love it. Um, and hopefully you can do it. So for example, the general plan looks at things, setting the standards for provisions of services. So fire stations, libraries, parks. Uh, it is, so in the 2008 plan that we adopted at the city, we say that there should be 2.8 acres of park, park space for every 1,000 residents. In Chula Vista, it's 3 acres per 1,000. In National City, it's 1.9. Not every, not every area of the city can actually have 2.8 acres, right? Um, for example, City Heights was built at a time, it, it developed at a time that um, we didn't have that ex expectation about parkland, so it got built out, right? And now we're saying, okay, we want everybody to have access to parks. We want 2.8 acres of park space per 1,000 residents. Well, when you're looking at a place that's so so densely developed as city heights, it starts making it hard. So that's why we're talking about pocket parks or parklets or ways to get people access to park space in ingenious, new, creative ways. General plans are updated about every 10 to 15 years, ideally, and they're meant to reflect the values we hold as citizens. So as our expectations and our values change, that should be reflected in the general plan. And depending on when, as I said, when a community is built um, and what general plan is built under, it's going to really impact what the, what the community looks like. So that's why you have things like uh, Carmel Valley looking so much different than, well, that's a little bit, but you have you know, North of the A looking different than South of the A. You have different neighborhoods looking very different. So while the city plan, the general plan sets the goals and standards citywide, community plans define how these goals will be implemented within a smaller geographic area or the community um, we are in. Technically Logan Heights, but I don't know. Right? Yeah. Technically Logan Heights, but I feel part of Because um, one of our panelists tonight has been heavily working on it for a long time. Um, so for example, the general plan may call for, as I said, a certain amount of park space. But the, the community plan is where we where it's decided or where that park space hopefully will be decided to be put in, right? So you look at the you look at the community and you say, hmm, we should have some parks, but we could put them here if you want to. Um, community plans are generally created with the participation of residents from those areas in, group, in groups that are formally recognized as community planning groups. And then community plans identify the infrastructure that will be built by the city. I need to say that. Um, next, city staff then they take the community plan and they try to match each one of those projects with funding. Now that's, that's often difficult. Because as I said, there's not enough funding. Um, and a lot of the funding actually comes with significant strings attached. So we have a lot of projects that we'd like to see built, and we don't know how to fund them. So that's one of the reasons why the city is selling $100 million worth of bonds for the next few years. Here's another picture of, from the uh, Ariel Community Plan. Community plans are really exciting. They do so much, they say so much about what people want to see 
in their community, how they want to see their community develop. Um, this right here is uh, slightly blurry, but it's, it's the vision of how people want to get around Barrio Logan by bicycle safely. So this is a um, planned bicycle network. So if all things go according to plan in a few years or several years, we will see people being able to bike through Barrio Logan using this plan and not getting their cars out of Now, one thing I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, oh, so these plans, do, do we need to have engineers and architects and things like that on the community plan groups? Because we have to develop these. No, no, that is not what happens. Um, there are experts at the city that come out and they, they talk to you, and they talk to the community plan group, and they're the ones who get to draw all these. They're the ones who get to know all of the laws. Um, what you need to do is just show up, have a, have a willingness to, to work with the staff, have an opinion, all of us have those, I know, um, and share your ideas, be willing to share your ideas, and be willing to work with you know, the other people that show up, right? Um, these are important decisions, so things can get a little tense, a little heated, but they are your neighbors, so ideally you can work it out as much as possible. Um, I pulled up a, a bike, the bike plan, because a friend of mine is bike SD, so I haven't really been paying attention to biking. But what happens in community plans is so much more, so much more than this. It's also, as I said, park space, libraries, etc. And then it also talks about, for example, here's a drawing of what residents want the community to look like if the plan comes true. So this is a screen from Mario Lohman. You know, ideally, someday this is what it will look like. These are the documents that, that say what the community wants to have happen, and then tell them, tell us the city how to make the decisions within that, this neighborhood to make this happen. So community plans include things like Detailed policies that provide a basis for evaluating whether specific development proposals and public projects are consistent with the plan. So there's, you'll know, sometimes hear about somebody, there was a, one years ago up by Montgomery Field, somebody wanted to build a very tall building. And they said, well, airplanes have to land. You cannot make it that tall. Um, and so it was not consistent with the plan. So it's things like, can you build a building so many? Stories high, things like that. that. That's what some of the things we decided in community plans. But also zoning. So um, zoning is kind of <coughs> an interesting thing. It's very wonky, but it's the part of the plan that says what types of buildings can be built in certain areas. So housing, commercial, retail, industrial. Um, one of the ways that I like thinking about it is how it impacts. How can it impact public health? Um, the Environmental Health Coalition has been working very hard to separate industrial uses from residential uses. So they won um, some really good language around separating auto body shops from, you know, from being next to homes because the air, the air is so polluting from our auto body shops. So auto body shops go over here, houses go over here, everybody's healthy, I do it. So that can, that's, those are some of the things that are decided and thought over in community plans. So very important, but won't be, right? A lot of, a lot of good things we can do. And then how to sit, so when we get to the CFP and annual budget, so we've gone from the general plan, which is very broad, what we want to see as a city, to the community plan, what we want to see in our neighborhood, a lot more specific. Now, then we get to what what capital improvements, what infrastructure projects do we want to see, and what can we fund in the annual budget? Most cities plan infrastructure work in five-year increments, and then link this with a five-year financial uh, estimate. So how much money does the will have to spend? Based on projected revenues, funds can get up actually be spent in will um, The list of projects included in the plans um, is created through a combination of information. At the, at the city of San Diego, there is a uh, prioritization policy. Um, but generally, broadly, what it says is, uh, does this, is this project in the community plan? Does, does the community want this project to be built? Uh, 
how is the, it's an assessment of the condition of existing infrastructure. So the infrastructure that's there, do we need to spend money to fix it? Do we need to spend money to replace it? And also, whether or not the project is fully funded. So do we have the money to build it? Those are three main, main pieces of information that the city uses to decide whether or not to fund or to go forward with an uh, infrastructure project. Because they're very responsible and will not start a construction project until they have the money. Mm -hmm. um, so the annual budget process is really important because there's a lot of projects there that are competing for the funding priority and, and construction priority. And there's not that much money that's, that you can use to talk about. So coming down and telling the city what you want to see in the annual budget is one of the things that we've been doing at the city, uh, at the Community Budget Alliance for the last two years. Interestingly, the city of San Diego currently does not have a five-year capital improvement plan. Um, they do it year by year. So the, the infrastructure committee is going to be doing that. Um, they had originally said by December. I don't think that's going to happen. But sometime early next year, so this is a prime time to go and tell the city what it is we need in our neighborhoods because they're going to be doing planning for five years out. So what does that timeline look like? So generally, uh, July through September, the community plan groups collect community input on infrastructure projects. So they're doing that right now. We have a flyer, you received a flyer uh, with a list of community planning groups um, and the website to go find your community planning group. So I highly encourage you to give them your input, get involved, um, because what they do um, is then in, or in October they will give that list, they'll compile it, um, the, the head of the, plan, the community planners will be in the back and they know he's spent a lot of time doing this work. And we thank him for all this hard work. Um, but, so uh, what happens is they give that list to city staff. And that's, uh, it's a body called SIPRAC. And they get together and they use the prioritization policy that the city council has. And they analyze and prioritize the infrastructure project and give that to the, the team that assembles the annual budget. And then in March, your council members transmit their budget priorities to various departments in the city that then get gets to the mayor. Um, and then in April, the mayor's budget is released. And then in May, we have May through June, um, the budget, we have tons of budget hearings, the budget's debated, and then it's voted on. So at different, different areas, plenty of opportunity to plug in and to make your voice heard right now. Um, it's it's prime time for the community planning groups, but also at any time, your council members are there to hear from you. Um, they come out, you can either you can talk to them, or you can, they come out to the town councils, they come out to community planning groups, they come out to events. Um, and then also, not necessarily always known, but city departments. If you know, say you want something to happen at your library, let your librarian know. Let, ask them to, to give your input to the head of that department because the head of that department is part of this group that gets together October through January to say, what is it that we need done, right? So there's a lot of places where you can plug in and get your voice heard. And now, what are community planning groups? Uh, this is a map of all of the community planning areas in the city. There are 45 community planning groups in the city, not, or, uh, so sorry, uh, 45 community planning groups, but not every area has a community planning group. Uh, for example, Barrio Logan does not. Um, what is a community planning group? In the 1960s and 1970s, the city council adopted policies that established and recognized community planning groups as formal mechanisms for community input and decision making processes. So over the, over the decades, folks have been there, we've got systems, they've got structures, um, and some of the people are just land use geniuses. They know, they know everything about their community, and they know how the system works. Um, so it's, community planning groups 
are in good places. The role of the community planning group, it is an advisory board, it is an advisory body, but they advise the city on land use, so implementation of the community plan and the general plan. They also help do outreach and guide input for the community plan. So, um, for example, the southeastern community plan is being updated right now, which is uh, in Canto neighborhoods and then neighborhoods from, I'm going to get it from 805, oh, Oh. Anyway, heading towards Encanto. I'm a little bit rusty on my south, southeastern community plan. Anyway, it's being updated right now. They need your input. There aren't that many people that are, uh, they need more people involved. So if you live in the southeastern area, which I should have boned up on, because that's what the neighborhoods those are, you should be getting involved. You should be telling people, and telling the city what it is that you're, you want in your neighborhood. And then now the community planning groups are helping you do outreach and collect input for the capital improvement projects and the planning. And how are community planning groups structured? Each community planning group generally meets monthly in the evening. Uh, they advise, uh, it advises, it, it, uh, well, it advises on the geographic boundaries only. So if you live in La Jolla, uh, you know, you're not going to be going to the Tierra Santa community plan group. You're going to be going to the one in La Jolla. And membership is for, so the folks that should be going to community plan groups are property owners in the area, residents, or um, businesses. And so you'll be actually there talking about what you want down on the, the, the block, you know, down the street from you. And then there's an elected board, which um, ideally represents the different the different geographical sections within the community itself, and then also the diversity of the community. And then on top of that, each of the chairs of the community planning group, um, they get together monthly in an advisory body known as the City of Community Planners Committee, which is an advisory group that communicates across uh, community planning groups to provide a citywide view. They also advise on citywide projects um, and they're, they're set up with one community planning group, one vote. So um, community planning groups and neighborhood input. Just earlier this year, the um, infrastructure committee and the city council passed a new neighborhood input policy. And that really kind of formalized the community planning groups uh, process to enroll to uh, collect community input around infrastructure projects. So they're doing that this year. They, they did a pilot program last year. They're doing it bigger and better this year. And both the community planners community and the community planning groups and the community budget alliance are working with Code for America um, to again to facilitate that community input. So Code for America is this really cool thing. It's kind of like Teach for America. Um, but it's for um, people that are computer geeks. So it's, it's people that went to the school and learned how to code and can write code and sit behind computers all the time, um, thinking of fun things to do, like helping cities, um, you know, either do better ways to do online or online uh, input or um, plan things like that. Code America has an online app for. Um, for the city of Portland Metro Transit. You know, so it's all these cool people sitting around doing really crazy things like that. But what we're doing, the, the, the city of San Diego and the Union Metro Alliance um, are working with Code for America on actually doing an online form. So uh, community planning groups have an online form that you can fill out and that they're doing. Um, and then we're piloting, helping pilot a text message based. It's a survey, so you can call in. There's a flyer that you guys have. You can call in and answer a series of questions on your phone via text message. And then also um, a paper-based system. So it's basically, no matter how you feel comfortable trying to get input into the city, you can do it online or through your phone or actually go and use a you know, piece of paper and circle where in the neighborhood you think you need a, a project or a project needs to be fixed. Um, and then it actually all gets uploaded and ideally they haven't figured it out quite yet, but it all 
behind the scenes get pulled into the same database that the city can then use. So this is really about um, facilitating as much input as possible in a really cool way. Um, and so you should have gotten a lighter on that. Yep, yellow, yellow light. So how do you have your voice heard? Again, as I've been saying, um, this is kind of a synopsis to give input to the community planning groups. Go to go to the meeting, give them the input, get involved in your community planning group. Don't just go once, go regularly. Also contact your council members and the mayor. Um, you can drop, <coughs> you can visit, schedule a meeting, you can email, you can call, they're on Facebook, they're, they're on Twitter. They are available. Um, and and I would also um, I also feel like talking to city staff in places that you know like your libraries and your parks and your, your rec centers let them know what you're looking for in the city in the city and have them kind of put that in of the the chain of command um, and then always attend budget hearings uh, this year we did the community budget alliance was great we did outreach throughout the city. There were over 200 people that came to the evening budget hearing to talk about what they wanted to see in the city budget, what was important to them. Um, you know, and we're hoping that that's just the tip of the iceberg, that next year it's going to be bigger and better. Uh, we want the mayor to come out into the communities and do community budget meetings so that, the, so that there's more feedback. Um, so think about what, you're, what you want to see in your, your communities and really start talking about it, because really the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And the city wants to hear from us, so let's, let's talk to them. So I want to thank you. Um, this was a basic overview of the community planning, the community planning process, some wonky things around land use. Um, there are resources to learn more. Uh, community Budget Alliance page on uh, the Center on Policy Initiative's website. We have we've put up Crystal who's put up one of our trainings. So things like um, how to read a city budget or how to advocate effectively for your community at city council. This will be going up um, soon. So there's a lot of resources there, but then also the City of San Diego Planning Department webpage. That's where you can get even more information about the community planning groups, you can find your community planning group if you don't know where they meet. Um, you can find out the schedule and the agenda. You can find out more about your community plan. You can see that online. You can see the, um, the general plan and really start to get an idea of what you can opine on and how you can get your voice heard. Um, so with that, I want to thank you. Um, do, do people have questions? I should have taken those throughout the I was hoping to put that on recently. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Are the, the community planners committee the one that's the men? Is that open to the public? It is. It's um, community planning groups and the community planners committee, the Brown Act. So they are open to the public. Um, they have you know, the, the three minutes of public speaking at the beginning. Um, so they're in three minutes now. It's a little, it takes a little. It takes a little time to get there. It's not so obvious about how to get there, but they're pretty fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah.